What's happening, everybody? It is Brent Dax here, and we are live on the Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page. And we're coming off the heels of a Syracuse basketball loss, the Orange fall to the old rivals, the Georgetown Hoyas. The Orange go to D.C. and fall 89-79. to Interestingly enough, uh, through 10 games this season with the Orange now at 5-5, five and five, that's the first game this season that was decided by less than 14 points. Syracuse is either getting blown out or blowing teams out all year long. The 10-point gap, the smallest margin of victory uh, in a Syracuse game this season. Buddy Beheim absolutely explodes in the second half with 25 points all in that half, but it wasn't enough for Syracuse as Mac McClung had 26 points. Elijah Hughes had a terrific first half for Syracuse, but only ends up with 20 points on the day. Didn't get a lot of shots off in the second half. Really struggled in that half. And a big story in this game was the free throw disparity. Georgetown attempted 31 free throws in this game. Syracuse got to the free throw line just nine times, which is a really interesting uh, strategy on the referee's part, considering the physical play was on both sides of the court. I don't think there's any question that officiating really affected this game. I'm not going to say it's the reason that Syracuse lost this game. As Jim Beheim just said, maybe some of you just watched his press conference. We do thank you for watching this later on YouTube, by the way, if you're doing that. We do put this up on YouTube if you miss our live chats right after the game. And, of course, we thank our friends at Kraus Health for putting it on. Uh, free throws and officiating was a factor in this game, but I think bigger factor was Syracuse just couldn't get any stops. This defense is still struggling. It's a younger team in some ways that can't figure itself out defensively. And, you know, Syracuse also got pounded pretty good on the boards. I think that's something we anticipated coming in. But just to look at the numbers, Georgetown with 49 rebounds to Syracuse's 29 rebounds. Second chance points heavily in favor of Georgetown, 16-5. to They were one of the best offensive rebounding teams Coming into this game, they certainly proved that one. So just to give you a few other numbers, we mentioned McClung had 26 points, including three of eight from three-point range. Uh, let's see, Mosley with 16, Allen with 14. You're at seven, the big center in the middle, one of the fastest-moving centers Syracuse will play. He dominated it inside. He had 19 points, seven of 13. Uh, Georgetown used a 12-2 uh, to 2 run at the end of the first half. To give Syracuse a big lead, and I mentioned the officiating, there was a third foul called on Marek Doljai towards the end of the first half that really swung momentum Georgetown's way because they just took this thing and ran with it afterwards. Syracuse just could not uh, cut the gap there. So it wasn't only the number of, of, of calls that went Georgetown's way. It was some pretty big calls and some big spots for the Orange. Now, in this game, we mentioned Bayheim led the way with 25 points. Elijah Hughes finished with 21 points in this one, really struggled in the second half. I uh, did dish out nine assists in this game, it uh, should be noted. Uh, Doljai was great inside. He got into foul trouble, as we mentioned. Uh, 13 points, nine rebounds, four assists on the day. Syracuse did not get any help from Barama Sidibe in this game, and that really hurt. If you go back to the Georgia Tech game, you know, Sidibe and – or C.D. Bay, if you prefer, as they uh, called him on the Fox broadcast today. And Doljai really – play with their hair on fire. Both guys really contributing inside. Sidibe nowhere to be found today, just two points on the day. He ended up with five rebounds. He got into foul trouble a little bit himself with four. Uh, with Quincy Garrier, Syracuse needed a physical presence inside, and they didn't get anything from him. He picked up two quick offensive fouls, and we didn't see him the rest of the day. He played just five minutes, and I think that's a question some people have. Why didn't Quincy Garrier maybe get into the second half of this game, and I think you just heard Jim Beheim mention it at the press conference. He's just he's he's it's 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 a struggle with Quincy because physically he looks like he belongs out there, but mentally he is anywhere but that. Picking up fouls, giving up defensive plays. Jesse Edwards got a couple of minutes, uh, you know, eleven minutes total in this game, but you know, picked up three fouls, and that's the only thing in his box score. He's just lost defensively and not someone who's ready to contribute and be smart out there game by game. So it was in Joe Girard the third we have to mention as well. 16 points on the day, four of nine from three point range, two assists, four rebounds in 34 minutes. Uh, played a good game, you know, for somebody who you know he put up a couple of deep threes. Maybe he shouldn't. A couple of turnovers that you would expect from a young player, but Joe held his own. Buddy was absolutely on fire in the second half after he goes into halftime 0 for five. It's pretty amazing to see his turnaround. 
So it was the rebounding, it was the defense, and it was the free throw disparity in this one that put the orange down. So now the position they're in, and I'll hop in the comments with you guys here shortly, so you guys uh, keep on going there, and uh, we'll discuss here coming up in a moment what you guys are saying in the comments section. But this is a, a, a tough spot that Syracuse is in because they're now 5-5, five and five, and they don't have a quality non-conference win, and they're not going to get one because the rest of the schedule, as you look down the schedule here for Syracuse coming up, so they have Oakland on Wednesday. That's at the Dome. They have North Florida to foul on Saturday, so a couple games next week for the Orange. They take a, a short Christmas break. They play Niagara on the 28th. Not one of those teams is going to give you a quality win in the eyes of the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee, the quad system, uh, how the system works these days. Syracuse lost every non-conference game of note that could really help the resume. Now, all those losses, Oklahoma State, Penn State, Iowa, Georgetown, are all top 50 Ken Palm teams. So Syracuse played a quality schedule there, but they didn't win any of those games. So they've put themselves in a really tough position that it's kind of all or nothing in ACC play. Jim Beheim was saying at his press conference that they went into league play with five losses a year ago, difference being they had a couple of quality non-conference wins in there. They had a couple of losses that, you know, put them – behind the eight ball a little bit with um, losing to Buffalo last year. And there's another uh, Old Dominion. They lose to Old Dominion in non-conference play last year. And they made up for it in league play. And, and Syracuse actually got into the tournament pretty easily. They've really put themselves behind in this point because they have got to be strong in the ACC. And it's not necessarily a number of wins. It's the quality wins you get in league play. So, the, the non-conference losses, and, and that's going to be affected by Oakland, North Florida, and Niagara, but the losses they have to this point and will end up having, because I think they'll beat those three teams we mentioned, uh, all look good on paper and look good in rankings, but you didn't win any of those games. So that's going to hurt Syracuse for sure. All right, let's hop in the comments here. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention before I start uh, responding to you guys here is Georgetown, through all the controversy, through all the departures, they lost four scholarship players in a month two more uh departures announced on the eve of this game on friday and they haven't lost since all this stuff came up they have won three games in a row through this beating smu beating syracuse today and a big win over oklahoma state about a week and a half ago a team that also beat syracuse this year uh, the rivalry, I love it. I think it should be played every year. I don't know why you would go away from it. There was technical fouls in this game. Jalen Carey tripped a guy on the bench uh, and had to be thrown out. A player not even involved and out medically right now <laughs> getting into it. A uh, technical foul called on Georgetown. It wasn't quite, you know, the blood on the floor or the oranges hitting the backboard in the days of when Patrick Ewing played. But a nice win for Patrick Ewing, the coach today. For sure. All right. Let's go through your comments here. Kevin saying, I wish Beheim would put himself on a short leash. Well, that reference is never going to go away, is it? Uh, let's see. Steven saying they win 13 games this year. Uh, Owen saying, I don't know what else to say other than the refs really did us in today. We were better in every offensive stat other than free throws. It's an absolute shame. Look, I hate when refs become this much of a factor. In a game that was physical on both sides, how can the free throw gap be 31-9? to 9? I, That, to me, is, is impossible. This was a game where four or five times Marek Dolzhai should have been at the free throw line after putting up a shot. I saw Elijah Hughes get shoved twice. No whistle. Like, if you're going to call the game tight, you got to call it tight on both sides. Georgetown was just as physical, certainly more physical, because Syracuse's defense really lagged today. And the Orange only get to the free throw line nine times. Now, Syracuse didn't put the ball inside enough. That's the problem. When Gary is out, Dolzhai was the only guy really inside because Elijah was hitting from the outside. Joe was hitting his jumpers when Buddy started hitting. It's all from the outside, so you're going to get less calls that way. And that's got to be noted. But a 31-9 free throw disparity, that's a joke. I'm sorry. that that How can things be weighted that heavily on the Georgetown side when there were clearly a number of plays that they could have whistled. So uh, Georgetown got some home cooking on the refs today. I don't think there's any question about that. And, again, the bigger things to me are Syracuse uh, defensively couldn't make stops. Hughes shut down in the second half. They got outboarded, but I think they kind of expected that because Georgetown's a good rebounding team. You're at seven in particular on the offensive boards. But 31-9, to nine, that's a joke. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't see how that was the case out there on the court. 
Uh, let's see. Jason says half of the roster transferred and they can't beat anyone. Just seven scholarship players, as we mentioned, for Georgetown today. Dave uh, noting a year ago today, Syracuse lost to Old Dominion. So it looks like they're trending the same way as last year. They'll have to get to 12 and 6 in the ACC to get those 20 wins. Uh, Kevin says our most aggressive inside player is a 6'7, 130 pound guy. He'll never get a ref's call. Uh, Mary Ellen saying that the refs were ridiculous. Syracuse doesn't get any respect from the officials, even at home. It was a joke. Uh, Dave saying, face it, the refs just don't like Syracuse. It's always eight on five when it comes to Syracuse basketball. I mean, you guys are getting in the weeds and conspiracy theories wise. Uh, look, Jim Beheim's the, he certainly gives it to the refs. Let's not be, uh, let's not ignore that. But he's also the, the highest tenured uh, coach in college basketball history. Guy's been around for 75 years. You would think that would actually work the other way and he'd get some respect there. I'm not blaming this game on the refs, but 31 9 is a joke. It just, you, if you're going to call the game, call it consistently and call it either way because the offensive categories added up for Syracuse. They hit enough threes. They, uh, the rebounding gap was big. As we mentioned, the second chance points were huge for Georgetown, but that's not something that should have decided the game. If you give Syracuse an even chance at the free throw line, let, let's, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see if, if, if it's an even gap. Let's say it's 31 to even 23 at the free throw line. You know, let the best team win if that's the way you're going to call the game. Uh, Kevin saying Syracuse seemed to uh, – refs seemed to like Syracuse just fine when Mello was there. Look, refs are human. And the ref in this game today, as soon as they announced it at the beginning and it was Michael Stevens, I said, okay, we're in for it today. Michael Stevens loves to blow the whistle. He's notorious for it. There is sites that do referee rankings now, and you can check on them. I mean, you can check any stat in the world these days. Analytics goes everywhere. But Stevens, who has been a Final Four official, by the way, he has graded really well by – uh, the powers that be in, in college basketball, the NCAA, the refs that decide who get the big, you know, assignments at the end of the year. He's refed in the Final Four, but the guy loves to blow the whistle. So at least you know when Michael Stevens is on the court that there's going to be a lot of free throws, period. But a 31-9 gap, that, that's just not fair. And I, I don't think anybody wants to see a game like this. Uh, Gary says going to get worse until they bulk up underneath. Syracuse does not have any uh, presence inside. They get it once in a while from Marek and Barama together, as we saw against Georgia Tech. Marek's doing everything he can. I have no complaints about the way Marek Doljai is playing, particularly the last two games. But Barama goes up and down. Last week against Georgia Tech, plays like his hair is on fire. He gets five steals. He's hitting the boards. He's scoring. He's aggressive. Today, he clearly got intimidated by your seven. Your seven is a good player. He's a quick seven-footer, gets to the basket. He clearly intimidated Barama inside, and this is where Quincy Garrier comes in. I mean, he's a freshman, and you're leaning on a freshman a little bit too much in one sense, but he's not giving you anything. And Bayheim, I think, was right to keep him out in the second half, as frustrating as it was to see Georgetown piling up the rebounds because mentally he's just lost, and you can't have a lost player out there. Jesse Edwards is tall but not you know, physically built yet and as somebody that gets blown by on defense as well, and it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle for Syracuse. They need that big man. That's you know They tried to get it in recruiting. They lost a few guys, uh, Isaiah Stewart in particular, and a couple other big men that went elsewhere. That is a definite missing element to this Syracuse team right now. They need it, and Quincy Garrier is the best option they have there, and he is just not uh, playing up to where uh, even a freshman 10 games in should be. He's just lost out there. I think – you know, getting two quick offensive fouls, the defensive gap assignments. You know, Beheim just didn't want a player out there in that second half that, that can't fill that in. That's going to keep you on the bench at this point. I guess the counter argument to that would be is they were getting blown off the boards, and you need somebody in there to to get you some rebounds and, and be physical. Uh, let's see. Jeff jumps in and says, rock bottom. You can't lose to a Georgetown team with only seven scholarship players and carry what a Bush League play to trip a player from the bench. This Syracuse team is in serious trouble when ACC play really gets started. A losing season is coming, uh, Jeff says. Yeah, ACC play is going to be interesting. If you face a lot of different teams, if you do play four or five teams that are like Georgia Tech. There's some talent. And Syracuse shot out of its mind in that game, let's be honest here, but are beatable. So your tournament hopes are all on the ACC now. 
you know, Jim at his press conference was kind of nonchalant about it and was talking to our Mike Waters saying, hey, didn't we go into league play with only five losses last year? Jim said a number of times in his presser as well that uh, he thinks they're getting better, and, and he did sound encouraged about certain things with this team right now, and that's fair. It's only, what, December the 14th, and you know, Syracuse has some time here, but there's no room for error because they don't have any non-conference losses of note. The selection committee looks at your whole resume now, and when they look at Syracuse, it's all going to be on league play. So the ACC has some teams like Georgia Tech and some teams in kind of the middle to the back end that you can beat, but where's the win that gets you in? Where's I mean, you're not, I don't think it's, it's you know, look, basketball is weird. I'm not going to put anything in, in permanent uh, sayings here, in ink, if you will, but can this team beat Duke? Can this team beat Virginia a second time when they play them in early January? Can you beat Louisville? Can you beat North Carolina? Because that's what you're going to have to do to make the tournament. And it's not just one. There have been years where the balance of Syracuse's non-conference play and league play required them really only to have one or two meaty ACC wins. They're going to need more than that this year. That's the position they put themselves in. Five and five, by the way, the worst start for Syracuse since the 1968-69 season. A few more comments from you guys. Owen saying, do you think Jim's job is in jeopardy? I do not. I think it's going to take a lot more than one bad season for that to happen. Uh, you may not agree with that, and it's fine if you don't, but if you're asking my opinion, if I think his job's in jeopardy, I think the answer to that is no. Uh, Kevin says, all Cuse has to do is win the ACC tournament and all will be forgiven. There you go. You always got that in your back pocket. And Syracuse has not done well in the ACC tournament historically, so they'd have to break a trend there. Uh, Kevin says, when CBS shows the bad losses screen for Syracuse, assuming they're even in the conversation, will they have to scroll to a second page? It's it's interesting, Kevin, because they're not bad losses. They're quality losses. They're, they're, you know, four teams in at the time you played them in the top 50 of the Ken Palm notes. I saw this. I want to pull up a stat here while we're yakking about it here. Here it is right here. Um, I wish I could give credit to who put this together. I, one of those things you see on social media and you kind of grab it before your Twitter page moves on. But listen to this. Syracuse this year against the Ken Pomeroy top 50. Lost by 14, 14, 21, 14, and 10. Syracuse against the Ken Palm sub-50, so teams, uh, you know, 51 and above. Win by 16, win by 22, win by 19, win by 51, win by 34. I mean, it's clear where the gap is with Syracuse at that point. That's what I was mentioning in league play. They've got to pick up probably three good, meaty, quality ACC wins to be in the conversation. But uh, I am not Joe Lenardi. Bracketology here in mid-December could be a foolhardy process at this point. Uh, I like Bubba's comment here, that, and I think we'll end on this, that uh, getting beat by two football schools is horrible. Yeah, they played a bunch of football schools through there. Oklahoma State, uh, Iowa, Penn State, so really three football schools. Uh, is Georgetown a football school now? Um, good good football team. I think I saw their uh, soccer team playing in the national championships uh, last night. Didn't see how they did. But, uh, by the way, uh, how does it feel losing to Georgetown? For those of you that feel like, hey, the rivalry is not what it used to be. Why do they even play these days? Look, this is a rivalry. This is the best rivalry that Syracuse has. I understand what Duke has become, but that's more of an event than it is a rivalry. If you ask, you know, do the old family feud test. We pulled 100 Duke fans who their main rival is. Not one of them is going to say Syracuse. That series has become something special, but it's not a rivalry. Syracuse-Georgetown is a rivalry. It's history. Both schools agree who their rival is. It's a little more emotional. Those throwback uniforms they wore today, taking us back to the days of the 80s and early 90s, were fantastic. I wish they would wear them all the time, although they haven't been very successful in those uniforms. When they do break them out once or twice a year in recent seasons, they tend to lose in those script uniforms. So maybe they shouldn't play in them from that sense because they're kind of a curse. But who doesn't love that old uh, script jersey? That Syracuse wears. I wish that was their permanent jersey and they could, you know, kind of sprinkle in some more modern looks uh, as the alternate jersey. You know, make Nike happy and put some new looks out there. Not like Oregon, who wears a new uniform every game, it seems. But love the classic look. I wish they would just go back to it. All right, guys, what do you say we uh, end it there for this live chat? Always appreciate you coming by. Uh, while we're on the subject, before I do uh, shut down, uh, let's see. I think we're done live chat-wise here. 
uh, for the rest of the year, we're not going to be doing a live chat after Oakland, North Florida, or Niagara. So I'll put that in your calendars, you guys. We're going to take a few games off, but we will be here after every ACC game. So our next live chat here on Facebook will be after Notre Dame. That's on January the 4th. I'll still do recaps for Oakland, North Florida, Niagara. I'm not sure. I think I've got a little holiday time built in there. But uh, uh, pretty much uh, business as usual, uh, starting ACC play. The next three games are going to be a little different schedule-wise. So uh, this is going to be our last live chat of the year. Uh, So let me take this opportunity to wish you all a terrific holiday season and Happy New Year and everything else uh, from now to the end of the year, we have to say. And then uh, we'll be back here doing the live chat on January the 4th when the Orange open up ACC play at the Dome against Notre Dame. So thanks for coming by for the live chat so far. We'll be back in ACC play. Please check out our coverage on Syracuse.com. From Mike Waters, Chris Carlson, Donna DeToto, the whole crew, my recap will be up Sunday morning. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Go Bills! So they take on the Steelers on Sunday night football tomorrow. Always got to throw it in there. Thanks to our friends at Krause Health. Thanks to my man Ben behind the scenes and everybody that came by here for the live chat. We'll catch you next time when the Orange take on Notre Dame on January the 4th. Thanks for coming by, everybody. It's been Facebook Live presented by Krause Health.